Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. I would like to share some secrets about web handling. The secrets are that web handling is important to your career and to your business. A decade after giving my first international conference paper in Stockholm, I gave one titled The Ten Commandments of Web Machine Design. All papers and theses from the Web Handling Research Center can be found for free at the URL below. I think Dr. Reed, the founder of the Web Handling Research Center, as well as my boss, was a bit put off by that title. He quipped, so now you think you're a Moses? Yet, just one year later, those Ten Commandments became the Ten Chapters in a Tappy Press bestseller, which is, quite remarkably, still in print some three decades later. The Commandments are also the foundation of Module 4 of my Web 101 classes. Much has happened since. I have been into more than 1,000 factories around the world and I have taught more than 5,000 students my award-winning and trademark Web 101 school. Finally, I have found a small amount of wisdom that I would like to share with you. This paper is the other bookend to my 45 years of web handling experiences. This paper is as much about wisdom as it is about knowledge. Secret number one is to know your customer. Duh, you say. That is obviously the people who buy, qualify, and use our product. Wait a minute. Life is not that simple. While your company sells their products to their external customers, you sell your services to your colleagues and bosses. When you list all of the people that you must serve, you may see many irreconcilable conflicts. For example, what is best for your customer might be zero defects, but that might not be possible and could cause economic ruin trying to achieve it. A simple solution to so many competing agendas and objectives is to treat the web as your customer. If the web ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. However, we still have serious hurdles to overcome. And that is, while we communicate most things about the web in words, Language was pretty loose until a decade ago when we started to define with great precision which of the some 20 common types of wrinkles you have and which of the half dozen telescopes you have and which of the six curl types you have and which of the three core crushes you have. The problem with communication does not end with precise definitions of defects. That is because customers, whoever they are, often misstate the problem for any number of reasons. Finally, the conventional lines of communication simply do not work because there are too many incomplete translations and misunderstandings as we move up and down the chain of command. The solution, however, is to send your process engineer and your lead operator to your customer's plant to talk directly with their process engineer and their lead operators. The second secret is to know about the common types of web handling waste. Look at this list. Which of these do you have, your supplier have, or your customer have? I bet you that you have most of these, and that some of them may be in the top three causes for waste in your plant. Associated with each type of trouble is cost. 
it is vital for everyone to know how much the cost is and what the proper units are, which of course is dollars, euros, etc., and is not the number of rolls, minutes, or percent. Once you know about costs, you can learn much about rejectable specifications by comparing rates of internal waste and external customer complaints. Beware, however, that all costs are underestimated, particularly for customer complaints. But, 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 you say it's not my job to know about costs. Someone else knows that. But, 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 you say costs are not a topic for engineering research. Let's be crystal clear on one thing. It is that it is everyone's job to know about costs for so very, very many reasons. Secret number three is to know your information resources, which include written material, but also the often neglected skills of listening to the operators and seeing the web. Is it flat? Yes, it looks great. Is it flat? Yeah, good enough. It looks like this a lot. Is it flat? Maybe we should call somebody over. Is it flat? No, it's wrinkled. We will let QA define their threshold of pain because that is their job. Our job as troubleshooters is to see the wrinkle long, long, long before anyone complains and long, long, long before anyone even notices. Similar to wrinkling, where a point of reference is dead flat, so too is wound roll quality, where our point of reference is an absolutely perfectly uniform cylinder. When viewing wound rolls, we must always observe the three surfaces with 100% coverage. Once you have learned to truly see, then you can go to any number of references to diagnose which very specific type of defect you have and what the options are for that very specific type of defect. Secret number four is the most important skill for web handlers, and that is to be able to diagnose wrinkling. That is because wrinkling is the number one cause of waste, delay, and customer complaint in the collective web industries. Fortunately for us, wrinkling is the best documented area of web handling. There are two books, 200 publications, 50 videos, and much, much more. We even have a super simple free internet app to help you diagnose your wrinkles. This is based on this troubleshooting tree that covers 99% of all wrinkles you will ever see. Merely find the major case at a glance by seeing and the subcase by process of elimination. Once you know the specific wrinkle type that you are working on, then the remedy list follows from that type. Secret number five is about winding, and it is complicated. However, you have little choice but to learn a bit about it because it is a notable cause of waste, delay, and customer complaint. What may disappoint you is that there are absolutely no general rules that you can trust over a wide range of applications. Instead, just as in wrinkling, you must know which specific defect case you have. 
The what, why, and how of winding is given in one book. If you only want the what, it is given in another book, an encyclopedia of defects. If there were a general rule that might be mostly helpful, it would be that most wound roll defects fall into one of four categories, three of which are based on tightness, which then leads us to the baby bear theory of winding, which is still true today, that you generally want to wind not so tight as to damage the web, nor so loose as to allow roll damage. Which then in turn leads us to the discussion of the four types of tightness knobs found on winders and which of those knobs are found on which classes of winders. Secret six is that many of your value added processes can cause extreme difficulties in web handling. These troubles are above and beyond web handling and above and beyond web quality causes. There are many reasons why processes can be the direct root cause of web handling waste. For example, if you calendar, coat, metalize, or print, the expansion due to the process can exceed a few parts per thousand and that may make the process not economically viable. For example, if you bond two materials with widely dissimilar properties, you should expect curl. Which leads us to the number one rule of troubleshooting. That is, you first must make a list of all options allowed by physics, particularly the unpleasant ones. Then and only then, do you decide what options to pursue? Hey, by the way, how about designing products that are not as difficult to manufacture, or at least not economically impossible, as sometimes is the case? You have probably been patiently waiting for some nuts and bolts of web handling. Here it is in Secret 7. That is, Rollers must be mastered before any other topic is attempted. While rollers are no doubt important, they are not mysterious. They only do five things to the web. Unfortunately, mis and misunderstandings abound about our rollers. Just a few examples include roller spacing, roller grooving, and web tracking. The good news is, the truly great news is, that rollers are covered in great detail in three modules of my Web 101 course, a chapter in a book, and an entire book. Secret 8 is no secret, and that is controls are also extremely important in web handling. The primary ones are tension, nip, and path. Tension is not only first on the list because it is the most common of the web handling controls, but also because it affects so many things. As you should expect, tension controls are covered in great detail in two modules of my Web 101 course, as well as two chapters in a book, as well as many, many other places. There are many applications for NIPs on web machinery. What may be most important is process NIPs, because if they are uneven, the product may be uneven or even wrinkled. As you should expect, NIP control is covered in great detail in two modules of my Web 101 course, as well as one chapter in a book, and many, many other places. Path control 
means understanding the sources of CD position upsets as well as how to correct them with active guides. As you should expect, path control is covered in great detail in a module of my Web 101 course, as well as one chapter in a book, and many, many other places. All controls require sensors. However, much wisdom dictates to never, ever trust sensors without independent calibration. Secret number nine is how to avoid certain troubles, specifically to avoid being entrained into problems that have little chance of remediation. There are many pitfalls listed here that include troubles at the start and analysis paralysis. We will illustrate with just one, the perennial problem. Perennial problems are, by definition, common, yet they are to either be avoided altogether or you must muster a problem-solving commitment more than ever seen before to have any realistic expectation of progress. But, 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 it's our number one problem, you say. My response may be, that it is number one for a good reason, or a good many reasons. Let's wrap this up by noting that wouldn't it be a shame to have wrinkles or any other web handling trouble and not know that there are free databases that list nearly everything ever written on that subject. Certainly, learning the hard way is, well, learning the hard way. However, reading is also not so easy because there is so much literature out there. The very fastest way to learn about web handling is to literally go to school. So, when should you go to school? Well, any time is better than no time. However, having a couple years of experience would be helpful. More experience may not be as helpful because you may have already missed opportunities and you may have already learned bad habits. Let's end by being crystal clear why everyone should go to school. The answer is simple. You simply do not have enough lifetimes to learn the hard way. And don't assume that your large company or even industry has it figured out. They almost certainly have missed some major essentials. Thank you so very much for allowing me to share some of the knowledge and wisdom that I've acquired working for some 1,000 factories over the last 45 years.